All right, CSRA, this is Rachel coming at you live from WUCC 99.9, .9, Williston, South Carolina. My name is Rachel Glanton, and I am Battle Ready. I am riding solo today. Nobody else from Battle Ready is with me today, but I have a special guest in the studio, and he's going to talk to us today about the revelation of the 6-7. He still calls it the mystery of the 6-7, but we heard the Lord clearly call it the revelation of the 6-7. So um, I want to take just a minute here and ask you to share this in the feed. We are live on Facebook. I'm going to switch that over. Um, Pastor Robert Reeves, I want to say thank you for joining us today. How about that? Thank you very much. Yes, there we go. <laughs> you got <clears throat> thought, sound now. I thought something was wrong. No, it's, it's not you. It was me. Okay. So I want you to um, open us in prayer. Would you do that? I sure would. I would love that. Thank you. Blessed Lord Jesus, our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, Holy Spirit, may we receive the unctions and the grace and the purpose that all the Godhead has for us. Lord, as we think further about this, make it known to us what we need to see, how you work in our lives, and where we are all going. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. So uh, I want to do a disclaimer here and let you know if you are listening to this program and you... Um, are concerned about anything that we're talking about, I want you to put it in the feed uh, or email me at battleready999 at gmail.com. The thoughts, views, and opinions of anyone on this Battle Ready program may or may not be the thoughts, views, and opinions of the owners, the staff, the operators, or sponsors to this radio station. So let us know. If you've got an issue, we would love to address it. So put your comments in the feed or email us like I said, at battleready999 at gmail.com. Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since we talked last, and you did the fifth show. Uh, wow. And it's crazy that you've been on here now. This makes time number six. Yes. And whenever I first invited you on, I remember distinctly saying, I feel like God's saying you're going to be on the show six or seven times. Um, talking about this particular subject. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other things that you could talk about, but mm -hmm. I think it's imperative for you to um, release this because the Lord started this in you so long ago. That's right. And um, there's so much of this that is relevant to the struggles that we're in right now. Yes. Um, and when we first started you doing this and releasing this, we were somewhere in the middle of the COVID madness. Yes, that's correct. And so much has developed through that and we kind of were suspicious then that it would not necessarily relating to this particular topic but it has shed light on what we're dealing with is in my mind and in my opinion i feel like uh, god's just not through with this and even if by the time we get to the seventh program um talking about this part seven and we still are not clear on this i'm willing to do as many more of these as necessary because there's so much that you have said that is so fascinating and it's so important i think for people to understand how god talks to them and right. as you talk about how god talks to you it helps them relate to the way that he talks to them right. so i just want to say thank you again for being here and i'm gonna cut you loose you know okay. the reason that battle ready exists the reason this program is here is because we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with powers and principalities and rules of this dark world. And that is Ephesians six twelve, wickedness mm -hmm. in high places. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask every listener out there, when's the last time you think you had a conversation with the person that you love, the man that you married or the wife that you decided you just couldn't live without? How often have you been talking to the influence, the evil influence in their life? Because I, I know each person in our lives aren't always nice to us. And we're not always nice back to them. So I want to encourage you to think hard, long and hard about that verse. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood. We wrestle with powers and principalities and rulers of this dark world. And the reason for this show, Battle Ready, is to equip you to man your battle station. To get um, in the know about how to fight God's way, not your way not the way we've done it because we've tried everything right whenever i was younger in my marriage i fussed and hollered and screamed and cried and you name it i think i did it at some point in my <laughs> in my earl, the early part of my marriage but it was because i wanted things to be different i wanted that what i'd hoped for in my heart and i don't think that's very off from what anybody else wants 
when some people have it right away out of the gate, that was not my story. So uh, I just want to encourage you, if you have an issue and you need prayer or you need deliverance, um, if you want prayer, call me um, or text me or um, get in touch with me through the radio station. You can also listen to this live on CWChrist.com. Um, go to the red button and just push it or you can in any browser anywhere type in 999 fm dot live and then just push the play button and you can listen right here whatever is being whatever is being released on this radio station 24 hours a day you can reach it that way so i encourage you to do that too if you need deliverance dial 803-761-7233 or go check out the website spiritualfreedomnetwork.com uh, somebody will call you back in 24 to 48 hours we're kind of flooded with calls right now we've had a video go viral so all of our voicemails and emails are packed and <laughs> we're trying to deal with the influx of of callers but that i'm not going to not tell you to call because eventually we will get to you um and just want to encourage you to do that all right pastor robert reeves are you ready I think I got all the all the announcements out of yeah. the way. You can find us on okay. Instagram, and afterwards, this will be uploaded to also to uh, YouTube. I want to check the volume. You go okay. right ahead and you talk. Is it right? Okay. I think so. You go ahead and talk. Well, first of all, I perhaps have said this before, Rachel. I want to thank you for allowing me to be on this program because it has disciplined me it has forced me mm, to come to better grips with this process this mystery this reality mm. and i'm still figuring that out you mean it's made you pray more often about well it's it? made me pray more often <laughs> but it's just uh, I've, I've been all over the place with what this was about um i can tell you five to six things I believe it means or I know it means but anyway um, the Lord is putting it better together and I want to um, talk today first about the mysteries of God okay now um, I probably did call this the mystery of 67 at first it's still a mystery but it's also a revelation it's a mystery first and when you start looking at God's mysteries yeah. by the activity of his presence, his Holy Spirit will make a mystery, a revelation to you. Yes. But um, I was uh, telling a friend today earlier that this is interesting. Where your radio station is at, near the end of Whiskey Road, near the intersection of CRS and Highway 278, mm -hmm. years and years ago, when I was in seminary, theological seminary or theology school in Atlanta, Georgia, I came into South Carolina on the weekends to go down near Walterboro to a, a small church and pastor there over the weekend. And the stoplight that's right out here. Yes, sir. That stoplight was there 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. well, I'm saying 30 years ago, 33 to 34 years ago. Wow. And I would come to that stoplight, either going to Atlanta or coming back from Atlanta, and I would stop. I would look up this road. This building was here. It was a doctor's office. That's correct. I don't recall the building necessarily so in my mind's eye, but I know I saw it because from at the stoplight, if you were stopped or if you looked to your left, depending on which direction you were going, mm -hmm. left if you were going toward Walterboro, right if you were going to Augusta, I would see the hot spot. It was already open that long ago. Occasionally, I would go to that hot spot. But this is what is strange, and I don't know why I did it, but sometimes when I would be stopped at that light, I would look this way and I would say to myself, this is the truth. I didn't know it was a God intention. Mm -hmm. I would look up this road and I would think to myself, I wonder what's up that road. I didn't know it was New Ellington. I didn't know that it was six or so miles to Aiken. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I never went up the road past the hot spot. Right. But I would ask myself that, and I, I have no explanation as to why I didn't turn left or right, depending on which direction I was coming. Right. 
and just go down the road and see what was here. But I would ask myself that. Now, this is significant. Little did I know in the school year of 87, 88, 88, 89, when I would ask myself that, little did I know that 25 years later, I would pastor a church in this community. <laughs> Little did I know right. that when I would stop at that stoplight and ask myself, I wonder what's up that road, mm -hmm. that I never bothered to go up the road past the hot spot to see. And I would say, what's up that road, that what was up that road within a mile was a church I'd be the pastor of. I didn't know that. Right. But I look back at that and I know that God put that in me for an illustrative purpose that I'm now fixing to introduce as we continue to talk about this. Mm -hmm. If I had this to do again, I would say, uh, listeners, we need to talk about the mysteries of God right. and how God works, that he works in mysteries. And a lot of people, they haven't been taught this. I wasn't taught. That. In fact, as much as I know, I didn't understand that God is a God of mysteries. Yes. And he reveals his mysteries. Yes. And I'm like, why didn't somebody tell me this a long time ago? <laughs> so I want to bring some points out. Now, this is not about 67. Things 60, that you would have yeah. loved to have heard then, but yeah. you're going to help somebody know now that really ought to know it. Well, I hope so. I hope so, too. So 67 fits into what I'm talking about. This, this is bigger than 67. Mm -hmm. So... The 67 mystery, of course, it was a mystery that's taken me years to discover what I do know about it. So I want to ask some questions that I didn't know to ask two years ago. I mean, it's not been quite two years, but about 15 to 16 months ago when I was first here talking about 67. This is where I would have started. You see, this is how you've helped me so much to learn what I need to learn. So here's some questions about mysteries. And then we're gonna look into some scripture to help us to see this. Number one, do we know that our Father is the God of mysteries? Very simple, do we know that our God is the father of mysteries. Now, in case you're thinking, what are you talking about? I understand because if someone had asked me that just a few years ago, I would have said, well, yeah, well I, I guess. yeah." It's just, it's just a concept I hadn't thought about. Do we know that our Heavenly Father is the God of mysteries? That's question number one. Question number two, do we realize that God, who is a mystery, must choose when he so desires to make his mysteries known to us, his church. Now, when I said that God is a mystery, I'm sure some of your listeners may say, God is not a mystery. He has disclosed himself in his son, Jesus Christ. This is true. But they're missing a vital point. The, and the scriptures teach it. God is mysterious and he brought forth this mystery. Yes. He disclosed himself in his son, Jesus Christ. He brought forth the mystery. So the second question is, do we realize that God, who is a mystery, must choose when God so desires to make his mysteries known to us, his church? Now, the point is, the church would know anything if God wanted it to stay a mystery. Mm. We wouldn't know anything. That's right. So we sometimes take for granted the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that we don't understand that our Father in heaven is saying, I have made this mystery known to you. It's a mystery. And I'm making it known to you. I, I just didn't, Rachel, I, you know, I don't it, know if it this did, helps anybody it, it but didn't me. register. It didn't register me. This is a mystery what we know. So number two, the question number two would be what exactly? You said, well, that do we realize, do we realize God, that God, who is, who is a, a mystery, mystery, must choose when he so desires to make his mysteries known to us, his church? Mm -hmm. Do we realize that's how God works? Okay. okay. Here's the third question. Do we realize that if God doesn't reveal his mysteries, then we will remain in the dark 
about unknown mysteries to us. I mean, that ought to be obvious, but if God does not reveal the mysteries, we don't even know there is a mystery. There's a mystery out there that we don't know it's a a, a mystery. Mm -hmm. Now, I used to sit at this stoplight and had no idea that a mile down the road was the church I would pastor 25 years later. But, I, didn't, I didn't know that church was there. But see, I'm suspicious, and I follow your train of thought because um, I'm suspicious the reason that question was in your mind at that light and any of the other lights that you passed along the way instead uh-huh. of those at this one is because he already knew the future he had for you and had exactly. planted that question. That's where we're going. You're, your you're a smart student, Rachel. <laughs> Every question he's ever asked me, he knew the answer to it. Right. I mean, and I think it's yes. me asking, but it's really him asking. Yes, that's right. He he asks these questions not because he doesn't know the answer, but he knows we don't know the answer, and we need to start asking him back so we, he gives us the answer. we got to do some research. Yeah. So I was beginning to say, okay, God works in mysteries. So, again, I'll repeat the third question. Do we realize that if God doesn't reveal his mysteries, then we will remain in the dark about <laughs> unknown mysteries to us. We don't even know they're there. Mm. Yeah. We're, we're just totally, we're blind to it. We're not even thinking about it. See, that's how badly we need Jesus and his light to shine into the darkness around us or that may be in us as we're growing in sanctification and or getting delivered, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Because if he doesn't shine the light, we don't see the darkness that's, right. that's there. We are wonderfully and fearfully so, made, yes. Right. So, okay, question number four. Now, this is the mystery principle. The mystery principle. Okay, here it is. This is so simple, the majority will miss it. The mystery principle. If it's a mystery... It's a mystery, and you therefore don't even know a mystery is a mystery around you. It's you, you're not unless God makes the mystery principle known to you. There are mysteries around you, and they're going on, and you don't even know they're going on. You're oblivious to it. It's a mystery to you that a mystery is working around you, and you don't even know about it. But you see, God wants you to know this mystery principle. So you start saying, what are the mysteries around me happening that God is doing that I'm unaware of, that I need to come into the revelation and activity of his Holy Spirit so that I may grow into the likeness of Christ? Yes. So that's good. if you understand there's a mystery principle, one of the things we are to do on a daily basis, I would say we are to do it daily. I'm not telling you to do it 20 times a day, but on once a on a daily basis, you need to say, Lord, what mysteries do I know about that are going on around me that I don't know about? Because they're going on. And if you're not asking questions of the Holy Spirit to bring you into enlightenment, the mysteries are happening and you're just unaware of it. Okay? Yes. Uh, can I interject something sure. right here? Sure. You know, you are excellent at warning someone and releasing their faith. Whenever they, you know, like, for instance, we have someone very close to us that's been given some specific information about their spouse and and what that's going to look like, even maybe a date about it. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions you asked back to me is, you know, so did she release this to other people? And I said, yes, absolutely. And your concern was not that God hadn't spoken to her, but that how, how she would be treated if things were in any way varied from what she believes she's heard. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is it's just a such a fantastic thing about your heart as a pastor that you care about a person and their faith walk. But I need to tell you that I can think of two or three people right now in my mind that know you maybe or or what might be hearing this and be having a really hard time following you because so much of what you're saying is a faith walk, sir. Mm -hmm. So much of what you are releasing here is that the understanding of the understanding, what Mm -hmm. really is the capacity of God to do in our lives if we can believe him for it. That's faith all day long. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't start or preface this by saying that, but I kind of want to interject that because as you arrived and began to land the plane after the the questions, the four questions, um, it's very clear that he knows the future he has for you, which we... uh, you know, spoke to a little bit about the light, but you, you really need to understand that the very same concerns that you have for other people 
and their faith walk, I continually hear coming from your mouth your faith, and it does sound radical. It sounds, um, you know, far reaching. So I just want to say to you, keep on because it challenges every person. People think they have it figured out and you making it very clear that we don't, if, especially if he doesn't want us to know, it's, right. it's just very important. But the way that you have presented it might make somebody go, wait a second, why would I need to know that anyway, if he didn't want me to know? But part of this is that faith walk. And I just wanted to clarify that part. Right. And thank you for uh, saying that. What we're talking about is partly the philosophy to study the philosophy of the character of God. Now, who are we to study God? You know, this is like an ant looking up at a human being. Uh, we're not even at that equivalent of the analogy. Well, if he is to tell us who we are, mm -hmm. then we are to expect to have some understanding of who he is. So right. that's not so far-fetched. Yeah. So as we continue these questions, yes. so we look at the mystery principle uh, that God works in mysteries. So a fifth question is, is and why is this the case the mystery principle exists because god is the origin of mysteries god is a mystery except he makes himself known i think i've heard that like for instance the apostle paul says this in different words when he says and the god of this world has blinded the minds of those that believe not the glorious gospel of jesus christ and they don't see it. So for them, God's not a mystery. They're not even thinking about him because they're in darkness and they do not see um, what is happening. So anyway. Well, hello, Cassie. How are you doing? We're so glad you it's made so it. It's so good to see yes, you. Yes, it is. I'm hey. telling you. And I got to say this. I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Now, see, the Lord gave me a word for her earlier today. Mm -hmm. He sure did. Did uh, you tell it on air? I, no. Oh, okay. I just told it to her face to face. But you just smile with Jesus. Thank I'm you. I'm telling you. Yeah. I mean, you she really does. do. She radiates Jesus. You're you right. do. Thank you. I, I told a friend of mine earlier today, I said, if when I was 25, if I'd have known what you know, yeah. it, it, whatever, I still am not saying thing I'm saying. When I was 25, if I'd known then what you know now, there we go. Yes. Uh, how much further along in Jesus would I be? Yes. Oh my goodness, you've got you you've got one of those rings from that oh from goodness. that from that university. <laughs> so anyway. Sorry to interrupt the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. <laughs> okay. We're glad you joined us, Cassie. Yeah. Thank you for being yeah, here I'm with us. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. Okay. Now, so. Because the way Paul says that, yes. we, we miss the point that when he says the God of this world has blinded the minds of those that do not see, do not believe yes. the gospel of Jesus Christ, what he's saying in between the lines is they don't see the mystery. They, 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 they're clueless. Yes. They're in the dark. So God is the origin of mysteries. And then here's one more question. Question number six. Do we know the kingdom is veiled in mystery to protect us, to promote us, to point us, to purify us, to pull us, to place us into where we need to be? Now, for those who are saying, okay, I've heard all that, but I still don't quite understand where you're going. So let's look at some, I, I would invite you to get your concordance out or uh, go to, um, what is it, Bible Gateway, and simply look up the word mystery. Bible Hub. And uh, Bible Hub is good, too. I, I, love I, Bible I, Hub. I use Bible Hub, but I often use Bible Gateway. And in the NIV, mystery is referred to 26 times. And isn't this interesting? It starts in Daniel. Daniel saw a mystery. He urged them to play. This is Daniel chapter 2, verse 18. He urged them to plead for mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery that God revealed to Daniel enough to see it, but not to completely understand it. Okay? Daniel 2, verse 19. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. 
Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. If God had not revealed the mystery to Daniel, it would still have been a mystery to Daniel. He could not have understood it. Daniel 2, verse 27, Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery that he has asked about. And then in Daniel 2 and verse 30, As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation that you may understand what went through your mind. D Daniel was a man of God. But he didn't understand the mystery, except the mystery was made known to him. So, um, and then the king said to Daniel in Daniel 2 and verse 47, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. So this is what we're doing. God is the one that has to make the mystery known. Yeah. Or we, we'll stay in the dark about it. Yeah. So, um Many persons know a lot more about Daniel, I think, than I know because they study the eschatology subject matter in it. And maybe everyone listening to me that really knows Daniel well knows what I'm saying already. But in between the lines, Daniel is saying, God is a God of mysteries. He showed me the mystery. He explained the mystery to me. And therefore, I know the mystery now. And now, King, I can tell you about it. Otherwise, it would be a mystery to me. And I wouldn't know what in the world was going on. <laughs> now, here, here's the point. When God began to talk to me about 67. Well, it looks good. Okay. Anyway, when God began. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when God began to talk to me about 67, I, I, it took me years to understand that the God of mysteries mm -hmm. right. has a mystery, 67, and he's showing it to me. Mm -hmm. And every now and then he will, uh, he will open up my eyelids and say, do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? And I'm seeing it. And I'm like, yes, I see it, but I don't see it. Right. Yeah. And he would open up my eyes of my understanding. He didn't mm -hmm. really open it. You know what I meant. He didn't open up my eyelids literally, but he would open up the eyes of my understanding. Can I tell yeah. you what I call it? Go ahead. I call it drinking from a fire hydrant. Okay. Well, that's... Because that. if you were to sit in front of a fire hydrant where they've knocked the cap off and they're mm. draining their lungs or whatever... Oh, that's fun when you're 10 years old. But you can't fit all that in your mouth to drink it. And what you're trying to do is drink this revelation. Right. And it is impossible because yes. it's just so much information and you can't necessarily explain it the way it's given to you because he communicates in images and your understanding... Yeah, not necessarily English. <laughs> right. And so, you know, like you said to me earlier today, if I could put it into words in English, I would say something like this. But you said this isn't sufficient. And that's exactly what you're saying here about this revelation. Mm -hmm. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful that you can't explain it because yeah. we know that is evidence of the Lord God. Yeah. Well, the, the revelation I'm getting now uh, is that God operates by the mystery principle. Mm -hmm. And when he began to... Uh, really mess with my mind about the mystery of 67 and I began to feel like I was going to lose my mind. It was happening so often. Mm -hmm. I did not have the revelation of the mystery principle and I couldn't relate it to a deeper truth that God was saying, listen, I'm showing you the 67 because I'm, I, I'm the God of mysteries mm -hmm. and I'm making this mystery known to you for a greater purpose that supersedes uh, the hide and go seek game that we're playing right now. When I say you, when I use the analogy of hide and go seek in case someone totally misunderstands that God would show you something and let you see it. And then due to our limited understanding, his spirit would go and hide it. Yes. And then he would say, can you go find it? Yeah. Will you seek it out? Will you look for it mm -hmm. that I will make it known to you? So that's what I mean by the analogy of, of God playing hide and go seek with us. Yeah. Uh, he, he does that in a delightful, righteous, wonderful and positive way. Well, yeah. I think part of it is to make sure that we, you know, get out of our own thinking and our own head and we know that it's him. It's kind of like when you have a need and he meets it. And people say all the time, it was right on time. You know, yeah. you would have wanted it sooner, <laughs> but it's right on time. And I think the same thing, like this very subject you're talking about, he does it. That is his methodology in every 
Yeah. Well, Proverbs 25, too, says it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, and it's the honor of kings to search it out. Hallelujah. Well, he made us kings through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, what that's what we're talking about. Like, he's not hiding himself no. to be ugly. He's inviting us into deeper revelation of that's who right. he is. That's good. Right, right. Okay, for those that are like, okay, you've, you've taken us to Daniel. Look at this and see again my... My eyes, the eyes of my understanding, mm -hmm. they're being illuminated. So listen to this. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. We declare God's wisdom a mystery mm. that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. Mm -hmm. So... You said something 10 minutes ago that really stirs me up that before I was born in the mystery principle of God, he looked at me and said, or said about me, I am going to one day reveal to you the mystery of 67 and it will broaden your horizon of understanding and wisdom about how I work. However, until I make it known to you, you won't have a clue. <laughs> you will not even think about it because you don't understand that I'm the God of all mysteries. Right. So God began to do that. So now think back again to 1 Corinthians 2, 7. We declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. So God knew before time began that one day he would start, as I would say, Metaphorically speaking, he would start 67. I don't know if 67ing is a word, but I'm it just is making now. one. He would start 67ing me, okay? <laughs> and 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 for listeners are like, what it. is he talking about? They would have to go back to the first two programs when I just talked about all these weird things that happened. References to that six references seven. to 67. Yes. Uh, that just happened and they happened and they happened until I was like, God, I'm going crazy. What in the world is going on? And I have to say some of the stories you told us off air were just as compelling as what you told us on air. I, I wanted to be able to record it all. Yeah. Yeah. So the 67 is now coming into fruition and has been for um, about a year. But God still will sometimes give me the 67 reminders one day last week. Uh, I stopped at the hospital to see someone. I looked at my odometer and realized that the the miles were, I forgot, uh, something like 36.7. And then I went somewhere else and it was back on 6.7 again. And I thought, this, this is crazy. And then uh, somebody sent me something that was uh, uh, three minutes and uh, – not 60, some, I, six minutes and seven seconds long. And, and, and it just kept happening. And, and in each case, it was just, I could just sense God saying, I'm, I'm just messing with you. I, I want you to understand, son, you must look at what is happening around you and stay focused. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, he's uh, making sure you're paying attention. Yeah. So let me get back to uh, Class the scriptures. I, is in session. Uh, I said 1 Corinthians 2, 7. So before time began, he brought this glory. Now, here's the other thing. We are at minute 333, okay. and I want to say thank you, Father God, for gathering the scattered remnant together. I say thank you, Father, for giving us safe places for your armor bearers to gather. And I thank you, Lord God, for pouring your glory out everywhere. All right. In Jesus' name. Amen. And how much more time do we have before I... It gives you 27 minutes. I've got 27 minutes. Oh, yeah. You're right. Okay. Now, see, it says, God destined for our glory. The mysteries revealed to you are to promote you into the glorious purposes of God in Christ and your destiny being fulfilled. And I, at the time, as this began to happen, didn't understand that. So, all right. Now, listen, these are just... Scripture references to the mystery principle in the New Testament. I've heard this verse 352 times, Cassie, and, and, and didn't pay it the attention I should have. Everyone that believes in the rapture can probably quote this verse backwards, but they don't see the mystery principle in it. Listen, I tell you a mystery. 
we will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Mm -hmm. I thought, dear God, how blind have I been? Beyond the message of rapture in that, God was saying, I'm the God of mysteries. I'm going to tell you one of my mysteries. Are you ready to listen? Hallelujah. I'm revealing a mystery to you because I'm the God that can do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yes. Now, I mean, I'm just excited about this. We need to do a fist bump. Okay. All right. Here I am. I'm, hey, listen, I'm so excited about this. I'm a USC fan. I'm fist bumping this Clemson girl with her Clemson oh ring. Hallelujah. This will make a USC fan go Clemson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, for those that aren't convinced yet, go to Ephesians. Ephesians 1 9. God made known to us the, there's that word, mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Oh, that's so good. And then Paul speaking of his own life, um, but God made known the mystery, the mystery made known to me by revelation that I have now written to you about it. Okay. Okay. And as you, uh, uh, Ephesians 3 and verse 4, as you read my writings, I'm paraphrasing. Well, let me give you the exact quote. Then you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. Yeah. And so Paul, as he understood the mystery of Christ, began to talk about it to other people. All right, Ephesians 3, 6, this mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise of Christ Jesus. Uh, so sometimes it is interesting. The church has forgotten that the gospel was a mystery, mm. and God made it known. And and we've lost the 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 total honor and adoration, the preciousness of that 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 the gospel is a mystery, yes, yes. you know, I mean, and I, I, I just, I, I got a, uh, I'm not going to drink your drink, but I, I you know, let, let's say this was the gospel uh -huh. and you know, we get so used to it. Right. We don't realize, wait a minute, this is a mystery and we should hug and caress and hold and hide this in our heart and kiss the mystery, yes. the mystery of the gospel yes. of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I thought, God, forgive me for, un I mean, I appreciate Jesus, but I've seen something. It's like God, God is saying, I need you to understand, I've, I've, I've led you into a, a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. I've revealed the mystery in you. It, it's and see, that makes me appreciate the gospel all the more. And see, the words I'm hearing is a precious treasure. Yes, yeah. yes. And so, I, you know, again, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's fascinating. It is so, fascinating. All right. Now, okay. I know this is God. Holy but Cassie, Spirit. one day a man will come and he will see you as a mystery. Yeah. This is positive. He will see the mystery of your <laughs> life and he will be compelled yeah. to want mm -hmm. to know the mystery. Mm -hmm. Because the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come on you a specific anointing of the mystery of your bridalhood to a given man that man will see it and he'll just be and yes. he'll see that mystery that no other man sees and, and yes. he'll be drawn to it yes. all right yes. now jesus has that mystery of the gospel on him that that uh i don't know that anointing that gown that righteousness and when the sinner sees it yes. by the activity of the Holy Ghost, you just want to run to Jesus mm -hmm. and say, oh, Jesus, what is it about you that I cannot live without? Jesus, save me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because until he reveals that mystery of his righteousness, who is Jesus? I don't care. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. just, you know, they claim he's God, but you don't really believe he's God. But when the Holy Spirit reveals the mystery of his Godhead, Godhood, mm -hmm. then you're like, oh, give me Jesus, yes. yeah. lest I die. And scripture says he meets us right where we are. Yeah. That's 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 the mystery in itself. How, yeah. how, how does that happen? Thank yeah. you, Lord. Well, I mean, I, you know, I don't, 
I don't know how that makes you feel about yourself, but you are to be honored and are to be honored. Yes. We're all honored. Yes. God puts mysteries in us that only given people should see mm -hmm. or will see different things. Okay. But you know, that's what apostles bring is correction mm -hmm. to the body in their confusion or the disorientation of what's happening around us right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a person walking around calling themselves a believer that hasn't struggled with some part of this going, okay, so what do we do with this? So you're bringing the understanding of this precious treasure, mm -hmm. the word of God, the name of God, who he is, that he is alive and active and treasuring that is so important. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, and, and, and it's not that, uh, uh, fellow sister uh, listeners out there, it's not that I think all of you <laughs> that was that funny. It was. <laughs> Did I say something funny? No, it was just <laughs> fellow listeners and sister listeners. Yeah. Don't say that too fast. <laughs> just don't tell them what you might end up accidentally saying. But I, it's not that I think somebody's listening to me right now saying I just don't believe any of this. But I am. I do want to prove to you by the mandate of the scripture that I'm not making this up. Mm -hmm. So if you're not convinced yet, listen to this verse, Ephesians 6, 19. Pray, Paul is speaking, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me yes. so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery, mystery of, of the gospel. gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And I thought, Lord, why didn't I see this a decade ago? I mean, I'm not saying, I know because somebody might mystery. be thinking it, this, it was a mystery. You're right. That's right. No, no pun intended. It was a mystery. <laughs> and, and see, this is making me feel so much better about the 67 because as I would talk to some people about it, you know, they, they would give you that, they would give you that fair, sick, righteous, self-righteous evil eye. Are you sure this is really God? You know, you know, you, it's happened. I've seen it. You know, I've yeah. seen that look. You know you what know. I call it? It looks like you stayed up too late last night. Yeah. You, you know, are you sure yeah. you're clear on your thoughts and, here? And so, <laughs> and, and to the defense of some of the people that would ask that, if I got up and started to talk about the mystery of 67, I said, well, God, God keeps putting this in front of me. Well, what does it mean? Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, how do you know it's God if you don't even know what it is? Well, I don't know, but I just know it is. Yeah, my I mean, sheep that's my not, voice. Now that's not very convincing. I'll be honest it's with really you. Really not. You know, you uh, oh. so you have to keep pressing into the mystery to understand it. Okay? Yeah. You yeah. know. Uh, you know what I'm gonna tell you? I think you've made God's funny papers. I'm pretty sure that a few Sundays he's slapped his knee and laughed and said, "That's my boy down there. Don't okay. know nothing, but he knows it's me." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, at least I thought, okay, <laughs> this is start. Guys. This is starting to come together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I love it. So let me see if there's any other uh, scriptures there that I want to. Uh, I like uh, Colossians one twenty six. If you're just following these scriptures, you can't refute the logic of the mystery principle. Colossians one twenty six. The mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. Yes. God said, I'm going to make the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ known to you. Okay. So you get, it, it, it's just awesome. I love it. And it's just there and it's there and it, and it awesome. keeps coming forward. So um, anyway, all right. Now, um, got to read this one. Revelation 120. Cassie. Repeat after me. Revelation 120. Revelation 120. Oh, my goodness. I felt the anointing of the Holy Ghost when she <laughs> oh said that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Somebody come get him. You got 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. I'm just and giving then, you your time check. And you then, said the, you wanted and then one. the people come and get me. Okay. All no, right. they're not coming to get you. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. Oh All right. Now, listen. Seriously. The mystery. I bet Cassie wants them to. The mystery, she probably does, <laughs> the mystery of the seven stars mm -hmm. that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. I, I, I need to say something. When you go to the book of Revelation and start studying the the ministry or the, the, well, it is the ministry, uh, the, the message, that was the word I want to use, the message of the seven churches. If you look at that, you see too many of us that know a little bit about that, 
We'll say, well, we understand that. That represents seven churches, and it was seven churches and seven, well, seven churches. Yeah, see how smart I am. I know it's seven churches. And we don't realize we're not smart. The only reason we knew it was seven churches was Jesus identified it as seven churches. Yes, that's right. He made that mystery known. Otherwise, had that verse, Revelation one twenty, not been in the Scripture, there would be a thousand commentaries written to debate and argue and attempt to decipher what in the world were these seven uh, places that Jesus spoke about that were lampstands. What were they? Well, see, Jesus made the mystery known. And sometimes when Jesus makes a mystery known, again, the more we think we know about the mystery, we lose the delight of seeing that it's a mystery. Okay? Right. Now, okay, now, Cassie, from now on, when I look at you and say, Cassie, you are a mystery. Thank you. No, the, uh, that's right. You say yeah, thank I'll you. I'll never see a mystery yeah, the same yeah, way again yeah. because of what you've said yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, but this also, uh, unfortunately, I, mean, I, really I know what somebody's probably thinking out there, and I'm one of them. I raise both hands. <laughs> People that I think are weird, I'm going to say this to them, and I'm going to mean you're a mystery. And then when they get upset, I'm saying, no, I meant it as a compliment. <laughs> What do you mean? And then I'm explaining this to them. I'm just sitting there thinking, no, I do think you're weird. They probably think oh, I'm a, weird, a mystery too. So when <laughs> Jesus says, okay, the lampstands are uh, seven churches and the messengers are the seven angels. And and see, the Lord had been messing with me about this through, through this six, seven message. He said, now, son, you know, there's seven churches mentioned in the second and third chapter of revelation mm -hmm. and and he told me he, he gave me this impression he said there's a six seven message in there but you're gonna have to find it mm -hmm. i'm like okay so i've been looking <laughs> i've been looking and one of the mysteries of six seven is six is imperfection the mark of men and we are moving on to seven yeah perfection the mark of god Six is coinciding with seven by seven's initiative, and we will become complete in seven. Okay, well, that sounds great, but when you compare that to these seven messages uh, to the seven churches, and you look at the seventh one, you're thinking, well, that doesn't compute because this is the church in Laodicea, mm. and they had a lot of issues. Yeah. And well, so... You're going to ask? I'm, no, I'm just going to say one of the very first things the Lord told me when I started trying to understand the Holy Ghost and, mm -hmm. and, and the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He showed me the church of Laodicea and told me it was the church of America. It's okay. one of the very first things Whoa. he ever told me. Whoa, okay. Well, listen to this. This is Jesus speaking to the church in Laodicea, and it's very much the message of the Spirit partly today in the church. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot i wish you were either one or the other um i i listen i'm particularly if any pastors listen to me i'm not trying to be critical of evangelical preachers who are trying to their best to honor the scripture and walk in orthodoxy i'm i'm trying to do that myself but i i always knew uh, that we were missing it when we would read these verses of Scripture. And then in our preaching efforts, um, we missed God saying that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were one or the other. We just, we just didn't know how to deal with that. Right. Well, here's one of the mysteries of 6-7. As we get into it, God is taking the lukewarm church mm -hmm. and dividing the sheep and the goats mm -hmm. where the activity of the Holy Spirit will assure that you're either red hot on fire mm -hmm. for God yes. or cold as ice, That's correct. faithless, where the devil can't keep using such churches to mistakenly deceive people about what is Christianity. Now think about that, folks. If a church is at a point where it will not walk in obedience to Jesus, don't you think the Holy Spirit would like to reveal that to people all around that church so they won't go there and think that that's 
a, a correct interpretation or a correct representation mm -hmm. of Christendom. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen lukewarmness in the church, which we have in North America for uh, really uh, arguably 50 to 100 years for the most part, and we ask the question, when is God ever going to deal with this? What is God going to do to make it different? Well, part of the mystery of 6-7 is God is saying, I am eradicating lukewarmness from my church. You're either going to be red hot for Christ into my purposes, or you're going to be cold as ice, lifeless and dead, where nobody mistakes you for my purpose. This is where we're going. Jesus said, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth if you're lukewarm. Now, that's frightening, but let's continue on. You say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth, I do not need a thing. But you do not realize, you do not realize, you do not realize. It is a mystery to you. You don't even see it. You don't even think about it. Okay? You do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Now, notice Jesus is saying you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked, and you don't even know it. You don't know it because I haven't made it known to you. And so the Lord was showing me in this seventh church stage, God is saying, I will bring into your setting my likeness that you can walk into it so that your shamefulness is covered that your eyes are open to see. And so the scripture goes on to read in verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline, be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Now, the Lord said this to me. He said, son, Revelation in verse 20, of course, is a message to the church. Uh, that verse is a popular evangelistic verse to share the gospel. But the message there is really to the church. But the Lord said the following to me in the recent past. He said, you didn't understand this, but Revelation 320 was being applied to your life when I brought the 67 ministry. Mm. I'm standing at your door, Robert Reeves. Yeah, that's right. And I am knocking. And if you'll hear my voice and will open the door, I will come in and I'll, I will eat with you. I, I will mm -hmm. divinely communicate and share something with you. Now, let me go back to the first show a long time ago. That's good. Um, what? Y'all switched up. Okay. Yeah, we did. We, we had a technical thing and she's taking care of it. Go okay. ahead. Do you remember in the first show, or it might have been the second show, I, okay, so I'm telling you, I keep getting 67. 67's all over the place. God is 67 freaking me out, okay? Right. All I right? remember. I do. I remember. And I told you. you, were, you if I were to give one word to it, you were disturbed. Yeah. I, I told you the following happened. I was at Lexington Medical Center, Lexington, South Carolina. I was visiting a gentleman. His wife came into the room to also visit, and she had forgotten some magazines her husband wanted. So trying to be kind, I said, well, if you'll allow me, I'll go back down to the parking lot and get his magazines. And she said, oh, please do. And she gave me her key fob that didn't work and she didn't tell me that but it had a key and the key fob and and she described the car as being blue in the corner and she said that the license plate was something something six seven <laughs> i didn't even think about that but when i got down to the corner there were eight nine nine cars in a row that were all blue that all ended in six seven no way and i, I saw that, that. Yeah, i remember that and got confused. The key fob wouldn't work. The alarm system wouldn't work on it. So I had to go back up there and say, uh, which car was it again? And she told me. And so I went back down there. And that time I did get the magazines. As I turned around and walked off, I'm like, nine blue colored smaller cars that all were South Carolina's plates. 
They all ended in 67. Yeah. And, and see, I wasn't smart enough to take pictures. Mm-hmm. I, now, I've done that for the last three to four years. Yes, you have. But as I walked off, <laughs> I got about, whatever, 100 feet from the cars. And I'm like, man, that's really weird. Man, that's really crazy. This is crazy. This is, this is unbelievable. And the Lord stopped me. It's like he put his hand up in front of my body and I ran into his, <laughs> my chest ran into his hand. He stopped me and he said, when are you going to start listening? Mm. <laughs> and, and, I, and it dawned on me, I wasn't listening. Right. I was seeing the six, seven sign and wonder over and over again, thinking, uh, I'm on candid camera. Who's <laughs> messing with me? Why is this happening? Is this possible? I'm, I'm losing my mind. Everybody will think I'm an idiot. I know it's happening, but I don't know why it's happening. I, I did not understand that God was saying, I'm the one making it happen. I'm trying to tell you something. This has been going on for three or four months, um, and you're still not paying any attention. Yeah. But when I heard him say that day in that parking lot, when are you going to start listening? I was like, Ugh. and I, and I finally, uh, my heart was melted enough that I thought, okay, God, I realize I need to listen. So now, what's the application of that to Revelation 3.20? I stand at the door and knock. Now, Jesus is knocking. And then he says, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he doesn't say, if anyone anyone recognizes I'm knocking, Mm -hmm. he says, if you, let me state that again. He doesn't say, if I knock. You'll know it. He says, if I knock, if you know it. Yeah. Yes. And see, he had been knocking and I wasn't paying any attention. Mm-hmm. And I finally realized, wait a minute. I've been hearing the knock and the knock is Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus says, if you hear my voice and open the door, then we're going to go to a new place in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And I, and I hope that anyone that's listening, well, you have to be a spiritual person. Instead, we compare, Paul said, we compare spiritual things unto spiritual things. For the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, but they are spiritually discerned. Yes. And I suddenly realized, Lord, I haven't paid any attention at all. I was paying attention, but I wasn't paying attention. Mm. Okay. And when the Lord stopped me in that parking lot, when are you going to start paying attention? It's like I, 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 I excelled a, a great big breath of unbelief. <laughs> I went, <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. I said, okay, God. So in the last two minutes, you need to wrap this up in thought. But the whole time you've been talking, I have been hearing. Mm. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Yeah. My ways are higher than your ways. And I think that we all have those reckoning moments where he... You know, like you said, bumped you in the chest. He he grabs us by our shirt tail and says, hey, 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 are you listening? So for the listeners out there, you know, pay attention because his ways are different than ours. His thoughts about us are different than our thoughts about us. Okay. Well, when the one minute I've got left, I'll, I'll say this and, and this can help us into the next show. Okay. I finally began to understand that when God was giving me the mystery of 67, what he was ultimately saying was there's a 67 mystery for your life and destiny Mm. I want to make known to you. Mm. There's a 67 mystery and revelation that I wish to make known to you that will be for the church. Mm Mm-hmm that I wish to show it where it is going Mm -hmm. and that much of your destiny has to do with explaining that to the church, the rest of your life that you have. I'm like, okay. And then he said, the 67 mystery is also a revelation of the promise coming in time revival, Mm -hmm. which comes from Acts chapter six and verse seven that we've talked about before. And he said, you must press into that to understand that. Mm -hmm. And so I finally realized, I finally realized God is not wasting his time. He's not going to waste my time either if I'll pay him any attention. 
and that we had a purpose going on. Yes. And the number six, seven for me was just God's prophetic number to get my attention. But it also is a prophetic number for the church. And the third and fourth program was a lot about the significance of the year 1967. Yes. So I'm going to conclude by saying something that may or may not help you. Uh, mm -hmm. One of God's favorite numbers is six, seven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you, Pastor Robert Reeves, for joining us today and giving us another piece of this mystery slash revelation of the 6-7. Thank you. And um, I want to also say to each of you out there listening, um, there will be another program on at 8. I will not. It will not be a soul battle ready, uh, but it is involving battle ready. So tune in at 8 and um, join us next time for the next mystery of, or revelation of the six. Seven. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for allowing me to be this your is, guest. My name is Rachel Glanton and I am battle ready. I hope that you have a supernatural week and that you become battle ready. Thanks for joining us. Amen. Okay.